Hello fellow makers and welcome back to 3D Printed Soup. Much like a beloved pet, say a dog or a cat, there comes a time when a 3D printer has reached the end of its life and something goes wrong and yeah, it's time for uh, some hard decisions to be made. And unlike a cat or a uh, faithful dog, you don't have to shoot it in the head or send it off up to a farm upstate. Uh, you can just replace the bits and then uh, have it working as good as new. So, I have recently had a bit of a dilemma with my Ender 3 S1. The motherboard made an odd fizzing noise and it no longer works. So, I checked all the rest of it and yep. Stepper motors are absolutely fine. Everything else seems fine. I think it's just the motherboard has finally died. So I got in touch with Creality via their website, ordered myself a brand new one. And I thought I'd share how I basically go about changing a motherboard on a 3D printer, in this case, the N3S1, and how to get it working successfully and not burn the thing out. Before I do, however, don't forget to like, subscribe and all that good stuff. So on with the video here it is this is um an official creality uh main board for the ender 3 s1 and the ender 3 s1 pro and yeah it uh comes in your standard creality box nicely packaged i uh, don't know what this means but um, i'm sure it's very very important comes in nice expanded foam and yeah they included a blank sd card i checked it a couple of times it's definitely blank uh, spare fuse in case the fuse on the motherboard blows. I might try that on the old motherboard just to see whether it was the fuse that blew and might be causing the problems. And yeah, it's in a lovely anti-static bag, so that's all good. I've already de-staticked myself using a de-static band, which I had left over from my old uh, working on uh, PC help desk days. I don't really know if they help, but hey, it's worth a go. And here we are. Now look at that, the first thing I noticed is there's a lot of uh, coolant compound on there. Um, basically, the other, the other board I had, the, the, one, the one which is actually still in the, in the thing, doesn't have that much um, compound on it, but um, I'm sure they had reasons for that. And yeah, looks pretty much the same as mine, except for the fact that the serial number on the chips is different. Mine was a slightly older variation. So yeah, here we go. This is my Ender 3 S1. There were my tools, my uh, iFixit um, toolkit and the other tools that came along with the printer. So yeah, we removed the tray because we have to remove that to make sure that the uh, bottom of the printer comes out correctly. Right, let's take this apart and see what we've got inside. Okay, first things first, let's flip this over. Don't want to crush any of the cables, so do this carefully. And just move it around and we shall get inside. First thing I need to do is use the Allen keys to remove the base. Now a lot of the screws on the bottom are different sizes so when you uh, take them out make sure you note down which screws go in which hole otherwise you'll either end up putting one which is too short into a too long screw and it won't catch or you'll put a long one into a short one and you may actually push the screw through something important. So make sure you put the screws back in the right holes. I've got a bit of paper next to me here where I'm just putting them on so I know exactly which holes they come out of. Remember when we're moving the base that there is a fan attached to it so don't tear that out of the motherboard and take that out carefully before you start doing anything else on this. And yeah, here's a quick look at the board itself. I'd recommend taking a picture of the board before you start work just so you know where all the cables go. Now, if you've watched the um, how-to video on this, um, on the Creality website, you'll see that they just pop these out really, really easily and there's no problem. What they don't show you is the fact when you've got yours, they will have hot glued every one of these in to make sure that they don't pop out during shipping. And yeah, hot glue is an absolute nightmare when you put it onto these because it gets in all the little cracks and holds these cables in fast. So yeah, there you go nice lump of hot glue attached to the motherboard so yeah be very very careful when taking these out but you don't tear the um, cables out from the plugs always pull the plug and never pull the cable if you pull the cable you're going to tear it and you're going to have to resolder or you may even have broken your printer so yeah be very careful with that 
and yeah hot glue I find just picks off with your fingers if you can't get it to pick off with your fingers then um, use a spatula or I use a very small flat head screwdriver but be very very careful use minimal force and don't jam it into the board these ones here though luckily didn't have much hot glue on them so they, they just popped out without too much of a problem excuse my arms getting in the way of the autofocus now this black cable here had a whole load of hot glue on it and yeah it took me a long long time to pop this off I just very very carefully removed the hot glue using a spatula um, I didn't use a sharp one I used a blunt one so I didn't cut my fingers or damage the board and just very very carefully remove the hot glue and if it's not removing it heating it up with a heat gun with minimal heat so you don't um, melt anything on here you should be able to soften the glue up enough that it'll come out and with that large amount of hot glue removed we should now be able to get this out there we go and just remove any other bits of hot glue you've got lying around there so it don't get jammed in when you put the cables back in right that's pretty much most of the main cables just two more to do uh, we have got these ones here which are the uh, power cables for the hot end and the um, heat bed so yeah take these out very very carefully just unscrew each one of these silver screws in the green plastic housing and then the uh, plugs along the side will just pull out there's no um, soldering here these are all basically held in place by those little silver screws what I recommend is just make sure you know exactly where these go in before you take them out just so you can tell the top two go uh, I've got a, sort of a, a washer that they wrap around and the bottom two don't and yeah you can see the red goes on the top and the black goes on the bottom of each one of the pairs but yeah do this very carefully now you notice I'm taking this um, board out now and I've forgotten to do the um, plug at the bottom. This isn't too much of a problem and um, as soon as I start unscrewing this second screw holding the uh, board onto the printer I realise uh, my error and yeah, it just involves me taking some hot glue off the, uh, off the cable. There we go. Oh dear me, there's so much hot glue in here. And once that has been removed, I can then uh, pop this uh, cable out of the board and continue with removing the screws. There we go. More hot glue holding these cables in for transit. And then, yeah, I'll just pop this out. And perfect with that final cable removed and the last of the hot glue which has been jammed around it um, oh god the stuff's absolutely everywhere taken off I can continue unscrewing the board and with the board uh, detached from the printer we can just pull that out there's nothing else holding it on there so yeah just slide straight out and just remove the last of the cables here which is this little one which is attached to the board get my fingers around it I don't think there's any hot glue on it oh nearly there no there's a bit of hot glue on the bottom of course there's more hot glue why would there not be more hot glue and yeah I'm just being very careful not to dislodge any of the capacitors um, or jab myself but yeah the hot glue is well and truly stuck on there I might have to heat this up one more go oh no there we go yep there we go and the hot glue has come off just remove that to make sure it doesn't cause any more problems and that's the last of that hot glue thank god okay so here is my new board um, just says A written on the um, SD card reader instead of um, number three. I don't know the relevance of that. Um, but hey, we'll have to uh, assume it's just purely a parts piece reference. And yeah, let's get this put back in. So we clear all the cables out the way to make sure none of them get trapped underneath. And yeah, this should just slot straight into the home where the uh, old board came out of. Yep, 
And with that done, I can start screwing this back onto the printer itself. And yeah, if I do one of, the, one of the screws at the back here, it will then level it up and I can then start putting all the screws in properly and they should all match up. Okay, with those screws back in and the motherboard mounted, it's time to reattach the uh, cables. So I am going to start with uh, the with these white cables on the top here. Um, they all, it's all fairly self-explanatory. They all fit into the right um, sockets. You can see exactly which ones fit which. Um, but yeah, I'd recommend checking the photograph which I told you to take at the start, just to make sure you get them all in the right holes. I'm sure there aren't variations. I think it's pretty just fairly standard, but if there are variations on your particular one, then yeah, it's always worth uh, checking the photograph to make sure that uh, you're putting all the right plugs into the right bits. Okay, and with that done, we can now attach the bottom of the printer back onto the uh, printer itself. And you've seen how you do this already, so I'm not going to uh, mess around too much, but don't forget to plug the fan back in, as yeah, that's vitally important to keep this lovely little board um, cool and functioning properly. So yeah, let's jump ahead in time because we don't want to watch me putting this base back on. And with that reattached, let's uh, put this down carefully, line it up, get it plugged in, and we shall give it a try. And yeah, with that turned on, all absolutely fine. Immediately started up, and um, yep, here we go, all functioning correctly and firmware is already on there. Um, I will flash it to the latest firmware later on so I can use my laser, which I showed in my last video. But yeah, all very, very cool. Let's just try it out and see what happens when we start the auto bed leveling. And there we go, all functioning beautifully. So yeah, that is how I go about changing the uh, main board in an Ender 3 S1. Remember kids, always unplug it first, never try and mess around with anything with a power cable connected even if it's off at the wall, unplug it all and then yep, yeah, you should be safe and sound. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this 3D printed soup uh, video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed then drag your cursor down. That's it, follow your Z-Buffer straight down and off to the right. There you go, there is the subscribe button. Give that a click and welcome to the family which is 3D printed soup. Stay happy, stay safe, keep printing.